What's going on, fellas? Happy Tuesday. Welcome over to the DFS 5-Pack. Don't forget to click that thumbs up today. We're going to have a little contest going that I'll announce in the beginning. I do want to say, like, the only benefit of COVID that I have off the top of my head is I get Tuesday football occasionally right now. Yeah, right? Like, it, it's, it's crazy. We got so many sports going on right now. I know the NBA Finals just ended, but having the NBA Finals, you know, NFL, MLB playoffs all at once is just overwhelming, but also freaking amazing. Yeah, man, it's going to get to the point where we're going to have football every day of the week, and I'm going to love it. Yeah, I mean, everyone's going to love it. All right, guys. So, as mentioned in the beginning, we're going to run a little contest today. The prize is, real simply, uh, we did a nice half-hour-long members-only video discussing this showdown. We went through cash game build, pretty much gave away, for the most part, what I think my cash game lineup will be tonight. Uh, went through a GPP alternative builds. If you want it, clearly go sign up and be a member. That's the easiest way to do it. But the other way is... Uh, as soon as this video is done, I am going to post it on Twitter and I'm going to pin it to the top of my profile. All you have to do to get a one out of 10 chance of getting the members only video for free, just thumbs up this video and go retweet it. One out of 10 retweets will receive the members only video for free. That's it. That's all you have to do. I'll pick one out of 10. I'll send it to you right via Twitter. If you don't have Twitter, uh, you're probably going to win DFS a lot easier if you have it. So go get a Twitter profile today because that should be a must for every DFS player. Yeah, you can't play DFS without Twitter. It's just you find out information on Twitter before it even happens in real life. So, like, it yeah. will just make your DFS life easier. I don't even, like, love Twitter all like that. I don't tweet that much, et cetera. You know that. But it it's where you – for our industry and even for other things, like, in the world, it's one of the best information sources. Yeah, especially if you're just looking for speed. So, again, the instructions are simple, guys. Thumbs up the video and then retweet it on Twitter. One out of ten, I'll send it to you just in your DMs and everything like that. Uh, retweet the pinned tweet that will be up momentarily after this video comes out. Uh, we've mentioned overlay over and over and over again. The matchup shop is catching steam. It is growing quickly. Go get in where you fit in. Uh, I already got a play that I like a lot today. It's It's been discussed on Instagram. I discussed it on YouTube. Um, I got some backup on how much of a good play it is based on one of our customers who's won over 20 grand on overlay, who's also a Buffalo Bills fan. So he likes the insight and was doing it before I even brought it up. Uh, the matchup shop is fire. Go get yourself a piece of it. Let's get it, man. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Let's start out with one of the best DFS plays on this slate on any slate of the year so far. That is the young quarterback, Josh Allen, who has been. Uh, an absolute beast to start the year. Monster quarterback rating. Uh, the addition of digs to the lineup has made him even more um, deadly. Uh, the ability to run the ball. The fact that he gets most of the carries from the one-yard line. Uh, I would not fade Josh Allen in any type of format today. In my opinion, he is the top play on this one. Uh, he is highly, highly likely going to be my captain. He's going to be extreme chalk for all of the reasons that your two-year-old could probably figure this one out. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard not to play Allen in this spot. There's only two quarterbacks in play, only one game. You know, I don't like – I wouldn't love this game if it were on a main slate, but he'd definitely be in play on a main slate because he's in play every week. You know, with the, uh, with the addition of rushing that a couple quarterbacks in the league have, there are monster upside quarterbacks in the league right now, and he's one of them. Uh, again, I know his schedule hasn't been too hard to start the season, uh, but he's doing it every single game. And again, we haven't even seen him have one of those monster running games because he's passing it so well. He's got so many ways in his back pocket to give you good points. Uh, for me, he should be rostered in 100% of lineups. He probably won't be. It'll probably be more like 90, but be part of that 90. Mm -hmm, with it. So, all right, next up is you're going to see me walking with my laptop to uh, let my dog in. Uh, Derek Henry, he's kind of like the Occam Razor play of the day number two. Uh, Tennessee is down a bunch of good wide receivers, or at least good wide receivers by their standards, which means let's just assume that Derrick Henry, who would be chalk in the focal point either way, Tennessee's going to make every attempt for him to be their uh, their offense again today. So, yes, I want Derrick Henry in my lineup. Yeah, we talked about, you know, ways for Henry to not be in the game plan, you know, if Buffalo gets a massive lead and Tennessee really struggles. But that's not the likely scenario here. Tennessee at home, we know how, how – how well Tennessee runs the ball. Henry is a vocal point of their offense. And if they can stay in this game, stay competitive, have the lead, how, whatever, then Henry's going to have a massive workload. He will get a massive workload. The only way he doesn't is if Buffalo just starts the game 
uh, like they're the Chargers, right? And they're up 17 nothing out of nowhere, and they have to abandon the run just a little bit. But even in that situation, it's got to be a 20-point lead in the third quarter before Tennessee completely abandons the run. Derrick Henry is really, really good. They have no wide receivers for the most part. They are going to try to give him the ball as much as possible. However, in the GPP alternative build, we do discuss a build without Derrick Henry. And if you'd like to hear more about that, go do that retweet. Um, because he's not involved in the passing game, he's more fadeable than John Allen, in my opinion. But in my optimal lineup, it is 100% guaranteed Derrick Henry will be in it. Amen. All right, next up, Khalif Raymond, wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans. So uh, this video focuses a lot more on our Tennessee Titans plays than our Buffalo Bills plays. And Khalif Raymond is a guy I'm looking at pretty hard today. So Adam Humphreys out, Corey Davis out, A.J. Brown very likely in in this situation. This means, for me, the most likely scenario the way Buffalo approaches this game, like every other team in the NFL, they're going to load up to stop Derrick Henry because that makes sense. You're going to have white all over brown, uh, like white on rice, actually. Uh, this means a guy like Khalif Raymond, well, I can't sit here and tell you I think he's really good because I don't know a ton about him. This puts him in a great spot to succeed as the likely number two uh, wide receiver for the Tennessee Titans tonight. Uh, he's got the easiest path to success. Now, this doesn't mean that he goes off like he did in his breakout game last time out. He's just in a really good spot to succeed. Yeah, I mean, to, to go back to last week where you, you can be in a great spot and not, not succeed, look at OZ from the Falcons who got like, you know, three targets right away, caught a ball right away, and then didn't catch a ball at all as the game proceeded. And even his fourth target was a throwaway into the ground. Yeah, I didn't see it, but thank you. That doesn't mean it's going to happen with Raymond here. So sure, there's scenarios in which that in which Raymond busts here and doesn't do anything, but kind of like we just talked about with Henry, that's not the likely scenario. We saw him play well last week, at least earn Tannehill's trust going into this game, especially with no uh, Davis, no Humphreys. Listen, he's just in a spot where they need – it's like a next man up mentality. They need him to step up. He's their number two wideout probably tonight, and he's going to get looks. And it's tough to be a number one wideout against the Buffalo Bills, making his path to success even you know easier in the sense that uh, Buffalo's white. He's a really good cover corner, so it doesn't mean that Brown won't get his. It just means that uh, Raymond is likely not the guy with one of the game's top cover corners draped all over him. Mm -hmm. So – there is that. Next up, Janu Smith of the Tennessee Titans. I'm just looking at this dude's picture right here. Uh, I have a feeling he's lifted weights before. Yeah, I think so. Does he? You think he's got like kind of big shoulders? Yeah, I think his neck and shoulders look like it's possible this guy may have uh, uh, done the military press at least once in his lifetime. That's kind of impressive, actually. So Smith, for me, is one of the only two pass catchers that Tannehill really feels comfortable with. Yes, he got some rapport going with Raymond. That's one of the reasons we like him. But the two pass catchers he feels comfortable with are going to be Jonu Smith and A.J. Brown. I like Jonu Smith and what I consider to be the mid-tier alternative build. Now, it's a showdown, so you're not going to get Smith at like 2%. But kind of the same reason we talked about Hunter Henry yesterday, I do think you get Jonu Smith at well under 50%, maybe in the 20s or the 30s or something like that. And down, that's relatively low. Uh, he's in a good spot to succeed in the idea that they're going to have to throw it at least somewhat. And when your quarterback doesn't know the other guys, he's just typically going to look towards the guys he feels comfortable with. And he feels comfortable with Jonu Smith, who's pretty decent in his own right. He's a red zone focal point with the whole defense keying on Derrick Henry. Uh, and in a PPR format like this, if you think maybe Tennessee struggles early without a lot of their good players, I mean, that's just another reason he could eat right here. Yeah, this is a guy that I feel like his upside might not be the highest in the world, but he's also game script proof. He's going to be involved no matter what. If they get the lead, you know, that play action, he's heavily involved there. If they're playing from behind, he's, you know, even with Khalif, Khalif Raymond being the number two option, like Smith, or the number two wideout, excuse me, Smith is probably Tannehill's number two option behind A.J. Brown, like that security blanket we talked about. So I'm with you. I think he makes a lot of sense here. Not even going to be surprised if he comes in under 50% owned. Yeah, I mean, if you had to ask me one guy to get eight points tonight, John U. Smith or Khalif Raymond, I would put every dollar in the world I had on John U. Smith. I trust his floor. Now, he's also much more expensive, which is going to play in your decision right here. And, of course, you can roster both of them. But if I just needed, like, eight points to save my dog's life, like, John U. Smith is the guy I would go to right here. Because quarterbacks, as we all know, they have a tendency to look at the guys that they trust first before starting to look at the guys who are a little bit new into the lineup. Also, like... Everybody knows Derrick Henry is the man for this team, so they key on him, leaving him open in a play-action situation. Mm -hmm. 
All right, last up, we're going to touch on the Tennessee Titans just a little bit more. Uh, I, I'm just going to call him Westbrook because I don't know how to pronounce the second half of his last name. Uh, but the key here, he's only $200. And from everything I've read, he appears to be the number three wide receiver on the Tennessee Titans. However, if you have good information stating otherwise, I would appreciate and encourage anybody to throw that in the comments section. But from what I'm finding, and again, it's not exactly super detailed on this, and obviously Tennessee could change this throughout the game. He appears to be lined up to be the number three wide receiver. And at $200, he's fine in cash or GPP. Uh, also, as we discussed yesterday, you can win with guys with zeros uh, easily. Like I ended up playing Taysom Hill last night because Troutman wasn't a thing. And even though he got that late touchdown, still easily winning with a zero right there. You know, one easily with Horner's one point in there the night before. So it's very low risk. Yeah, when we talk about win, just so we're clear, we're talking about cashing, like yeah. cash games or tournaments. You're probably not winning a tournament with a zero, but you're probably not winning a tournament anyway. So it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, exactly. So I knew you're I knew that's where you were going. So I took it before you could say it. Um yeah, yeah listen, two hundred dollars. There's a couple really cheap guys on this slate. So I think that's the only reason he's like not more of a must is because you kind of have your litter because Tennessee's down so many guys. But he looks to be the most optimal. I would use him in cash games because you're right, you can win with a zero. And if he goes off, you're going to need him. And not like goes off for like three touchdowns. If he has like four catches for 80 yards, you're going to need him. Yeah, and exactly. And if he does something, even a little bit of something, that's just the cherry on the Sunday. Like I said, on Sunday night for the Seattle versus Minnesota showdown, uh, my lineup was right around like top 12%-ish. And that's what Travis Horner doing, like I said, I think he had what, 1.2 or 1.4, something like that. If a guy like Westbrook can give you like three catches, for 37 yards, which is by no stretch a monster game or anything like that. Like, you really vault up the leaderboard like that. Um, so he works. And even if he gets you a zero, you still have the other 99% of your salary to do damage with. Mm -hmm. So that's it, guys. Don't forget to do that retweet. Let's give away some free stuff. Uh, thanks a lot for watching today, and we'll talk to you guys about some baseball here momentarily. Thanks, guys.